when you heal something, the symptom goes away. That said, my health and my well-being have become the utmost priority, and I don't feel good in America. It's a very masculine, hard culture. We all know that. And when and now that I'm much healthier, my heart feels much more nourished when I'm outside the U.S. And also, of course, I just live by beaches with big, beautiful views and more heart-centered cultures. Hey everyone, welcome back to A Mental Health Break. We are here for another week, but for today, we are bringing on a familiar face. He's someone who I was going through my set list. I looked at some standout guests, people who made a big impression on me because of their dedication to what they do, not just for themselves in mental health, but for others. You may remember him. He has this process that helps you remove anxiety. He's got new developments on this front, so I had to bring him back. Daniel, welcome back to A Mental Health Break. Thank you for having me, Vincent. Thanks for telling me I was a standout uh, guest. And I wish everybody had an intro like that to make their day better. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if every morning, you know, you wake up and it's like, hey, welcome. Welcome to the world is Jenny. Jenny is incredible at making smoothies. And Bob is really good at taking his dog for a walk. Everyone deserves an intro. So thank you for that intro. If you're out there, I just want to say, hey, welcome to the show is you. You have incredible ears that are able to receive sound. Way to go, you. That was the best I could come up with. But well, it's a pleasure to be here on Mental Health Break. And what I want to share with your audience is I know that you give people a mental health break. And what I want to share with them, which they haven't heard before, is how to take a break from a mental health break. Not from your show. I mean, our whole approach with anxiety and mental health is usually that it's this constant, never anything that we're managing it. And so, of course, a break from the pain is valuable. And what I'm going to explain to your audience is we figured out how to solve fear and anxiety permanently so that you wouldn't have to take a break anymore. I still want them to listen to your show, but I hope you can understand that uh, myself and our clients, there's no more mental health breaks Uh and the way we're able to do that, and I know you're skeptical, is because we realized the root cause of anxiety was that deep down, everyone who feels fear and anxiety is really, for some reason or another, just not feeling safe. So we don't even uh, get rid of anxiety. That's a symptom of not feeling safe. And we developed a process over eight years and over a million in research and development, a step-by-step -step process so that by the time you're done, within six weeks, you just feel safe from the inside out. And when you feel safe from the inside out, as you can imagine, the anxiety, which is a symptom, goes away and stays away. So if you want to spend you know, the rest of your life managing your anxiety, learning about your anxiety, getting tips on your anxiety, uh, you should leave now. What I want to share with you is what changed my life and what ch changes our clients' lives, which is to be free of this damn thing forever. How's that sound, Vincent? I love it, and I love the passion you bring and the evolution of the programs. When did you first start the process of creating this framework? Well, it started really, you know, I mean, there was the unofficial start, which is when I realized, you know, I needed help. So, you know, when I tell people that we solve fear and anxiety, they like the sound. Of course, they don't believe me. Like, be skeptical. And I also want to be clear with your audience. You're going to hear some things that are going to make sense, but you're not going to fully believe me. And I don't want you to. I don't want you to trust me. I'm trying to open up a perceptual framework so that you can see that being free of this is possible and that it can even be simple. And why is this necessary? Because the mental health community accidentally has confused the living pejesus out of everyone and left everyone feeling very, very, very confused. So you're confused, not because it is confusing, but because you've been confused. It's not your fault. But the reason I'm pointing it out is because if I say we got something simple, it'll feel foreign. It'll feel weird. So I'm going to explain to you why it's possible that you could solve this simply, but you still won't believe me. So at the very end, I'm going to send you to my website to get a free technique where you can apply one of our techniques and you can really feel the potency of what we've discovered so that you can see that this can be simple and what you'll get from that technique is an is a result results matter and why do results matter to me and permanent results matter to me which is what my company is about is because growing up uh, my dad was a scientist but he was also an inventor and he 
would invent things. And I thought this was just the most incredible superpower ever. If like it didn't exist and then he just makes something, it's as close to magic as you can imagine. Um, he was not a superhero. He was just a regular guy, but he invented. And I, and he told me, he said, Daniel, you know, if something in this world isn't working, you can invent things that are better. And I thought, wow, he's right. And so as a kid, I would, I would invent things. When I was a kid, when mountain bikes first started to become a thing and, and all my other friends just owned a mountain bike. I looked at the mountain bike and I looked at the brake design and I was like, those are okay. And I invented my own mountain bike brakes at 13. And it was so neat to see, to get a result. Absolutely. It worked better. And my dad also told me the neat thing about science is there, there is a truth, meaning there is an answer. There's a, if you're getting results, it means you do know what's going on. He said a lot of people can claim to know what they're going on, but it's the person that can get actual data and results. That's who you should trust. And he, and he also said just results matter. And that stuck with me. And so I went to engineering school because I liked inventing things and making things work. And I went to UC Berkeley and I was properly trained how to look at a complex problem, break it down into its mechanics and me mechanisms, build a prototype, and then you test. You test to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, you tweak it and you optimize it and you keep optimizing it until you get something that consistently works and gets results. And it's a certain training. It's a certain attitude of problem solving. Not everyone knows how to problem solve. We were trained and I was good at it. Now, the good news was engineering school was great at helping me make machines work. Uh, they did not teach me how to make relationships work. I don't know if I missed that class or if it was part of quantum theory, but I missed it. So I came out of engineering school, fell in love. Disney told me I'm living happily ever after. Spoiler alert, I did not. And the relationship turned very unhealthy, very fast. And I was too insecure and codependent to leave. And so I stayed in a relationship, which I later found out at times I was being emotionally abused. And when it was over, um, two weeks after it was over, Someone interrupted me, and all of a sudden, I was filled with terror. I was just filled with terror and panic, and it kept happening. A car horn, an email, and I didn't know what was going on. And then I, I get diagnosed with severe anxiety and complex PTSD from the relationship with this woman. Mm -hmm. And like your listeners, I went, okay. And I, I started looking for help, and I went to therapists and doctors and psychologists and spiritual teachers. I did the retreats. I went to the gurus. I tried CGT and EFT and EMDR and MOUSE. Like I tried all the letters from all the people with the letters. And I spent a hundred thousand dollars in 10 years and nothing solved it. It was, it would, it helped me manage it, but it was still there. It would get worse. And then my family didn't want to be around somebody in pain. So all my friends and family walked away, just leaving me even more feeling even more broken and alone. And I, Vincent, I wouldn't have taken my own life, but I definitely saw why people do. Right. Because my life was not what I wanted it to be. And because the experts didn't give me a permanent solution, I felt trapped and hopeless. And I kind of had like a come to Jesus, come to God, come to universe moment where I was like, what? Like what? I just spent 10 years trying to feel like, what do you, what? What? <laughs> what? If you tell me what it is, I'll do it. And I hear this voice, my dad's voice, kind of, uh, which is like, if something's not working, invent something yourself that makes it better. And I went, oh, oh, I thought you meant like bike parts, not humans. But now that you mention it, yeah, the mental health community has well-intentioned people, but they're not getting the job done. Anxiety is on the rise. Alcoholism related liver disease is on the rise. Opioid the opioid epidemic is getting worse. Number three killer of teens is suicide. Like they're not getting the job done. And my dad said results mattered. And I just looked at this industry and I said, they don't get great results. So partly to help with my own pain, but also I just saw the whole world was in pain and not just getting management, but not liberation. So I started my own research company with the mission. Could we engineer a solution, not psychology, not spirituality, like engineer a permanent solution. And it was way harder than we thought, but I was one of the earliest test cases. I, after basically not being able to leave my house in the fetal position, I woke up one morning and I felt calm. And then the things happened that normally sent me into terror and they didn't. And I thought, okay, well, this is temporary. There's no way this is permanent, but it was.
It's been 10 years. I've been chill as a cucumber for 10 years. And, but we didn't do, we weren't done yet because we needed, we needed this to scale. We needed to help millions. So we took, we figured out why, what we did and what worked. But then we spent another several years building this online program that's step-by-step and it works. It gets a 90% success rate, no matter what type of fear or anxiety you have, we have a 90% success rate and we track your results because results matter. And also when we work with people, we don't take your money on the front end. We, we own, when we, uh, once we know at the end that you have measurable data, that your anxiety is gone, that's when you pay us because that's just the right thing to do. Pay for results, not for insights, results. And then finally, again, results matter. So no matter what I say, and then I'll stop talking um, for a bit, uh, is again, don't just believe me at the end, go get the free technique at my website, apply the technique and get a result for yourself so you can feel this for yourself. So results matter. What do you think about that, Vincent? Oh, can't hear you. Yep. There you go. I appreciate the willingness to not make it money focused. You're doing this to help people overcome something that hindered your life, your quality of life. And now you're saying 10 years later, I think that's pretty remarkable. So congratulations on how far you've come. But before we dive into that, I have to ask, are you still in Brazil? When we last spoke, we were in Brazil and I forgot to ask before the show started. Thank you for asking. The short answer is no. Um, Our program goes so deep that you start to see multiple things in your life improve. So yes, from using these tools, I got emotional freedom. But then about a year and a half later, I noticed that I just, I, everything I own fit in one bag and I would live in a new country every year. So I was in Brazil. Then after, where did I go there? I think it was Bali, then Thailand, then India, then South Africa, then Estonia. Then I was just in Sweden. And now I'm in England. I, I this I'm not vibing with England. So next week I'm going back to Mexico. So people have asked me like, Oh, I get it. You're a minimalist. Oh, I get it. You're a digital nomad. And I went, Oh no. I mean, what? But everybody wants freedom. And what I've noticed is not only am I emotionally free, but I'm very logistically free. So if like both of those are possible. I think that's great. Um, I'm going to ask you, because if this is a different answer for everybody, what does traveling do for your mental health? I know there are tons of positive benefits, but what do you like about it most? Well, not to sound like a broken record, I don't, the mental health is just gone. Like I'm healthy and grounded. Uh, so I don't need to do anything to maintain it. When you heal something, the symptom goes away. That said, my health and my well being have become the utmost priority, and I don't feel good in America. It's a very masculine, hard culture. We all know that. And when and now that I'm much healthier, my heart feels much more nourished when I'm outside the U.S. And also, of course, I just live by beaches with big, beautiful views and more heart-centered cultures. So it's not for my mental health, but my soul nourishment likes being outside the U.S., by a beach, and yeah, as I'm sure you can imagine. Of course. I love it. Well, I traded my snowflakes for palm trees and moved to Florida for many, many reasons. But let's dive back into this engineered solution that you created. So, yeah, what I'm trying to do is explain to your audience, not that they want a permanent solution for anxiety. They know they want that. I don't have to sell them on that. It's to show them why this is even possible. And it's possible because what your audience, and this is not you or your audience's fault, it's what they have been conditioned to do isn't working, but they don't know why it's not working. So how would they know what's working? So here's why what everybody's been doing hasn't been working. When I say not working, I mean not solving. I don't want to disparage the mental health community. I'm just saying they're not solving it. So that's what I mean by not working. It's because most people, when they try to go at mental health, what do they do? Their approach is either spiritual or psychological. So, Spiritual and psychological are understandings. They are perceptual frameworks of trying to understand what the heck is going on. Like, it's your ego. Okay, like, that's a concept. And it may help you understand things. It's like a map. 
or you know you have a scarcity mindset or you are focused on the future and then you're not present to what's now those are all theoretical abstract ways of understanding what's going on and there's some value in it the problem is it's not it can't get it can't solve things because you don't actually mechanically know what's going on and how to solve it. If you want to solve something, you don't want spiritual or psychological. What you want is mechanical. So, for instance, if you're at a restaurant and you start choking and like. You know, two people walks up. One person walks up and says, oh, this is interesting. Like you really are focused on your lack of breathing. You have a real scarcity mindset and you're focused on your lack of breath instead of the abundance of all the air that is out there. And can you also see that perhaps your childhood made you eat food too quickly and that's why you're choking? Like, okay, that's great, but... Or somebody walks up and says, hey, here's what's going on. You have an airway. It's mechanically blocked by a piece of kale, and I am going to add mechanical pressure to your stomach, which puts pressure behind the kale, it pops out the kale, and then air can mechanically get into your airway so you don't die. Do you want spiritual, psychological, or mechanical? Which do you want? Can't hear you. Give me the mechanical. Exactly. When you hear it, you go, yeah, mechanical. That's what we want when you want to solve something, but that's not what people are getting. So if you're listening to this, you haven't solved your mental health because the people that are trying to solve it gave you insights and constructs, but they don't have a mechanical understanding how to solve it. And that's what you need. So I want to give your audience a quick inner mechanics lesson, because even if I say, hey, anxiety is mechanical, what does that even mean? I want you to feel it. Now, we're gonna, what we're going to do is a role play, a non-sexual role play. You can make it sexual if you want, but I'm just saying for me, it's not. Uh, I understand if you want to make it sexual because my raw animal magnetism is probably coming through the Zoom waves right now. The point is, what I want to share with you is that perhaps human beings are a lot simpler and more mechanical than you think, that your anxiety is more mechanical than you think. So we're going to do this role play, and it probably is going to bring up a whole bunch of questions like, what if? What about this? Well, that's a good point. But I want you to just focus on what I'm trying to illuminate, which is that there are real sort of simple mechanics going on in us that if you know what to do, if you, if, if you know, and if you understand the mechanics, you can understand why a person feels anxious and also the mechanics of how to make a person feel less anxious mechanically, okay? We cool? And in this role play, I'll be talking to you, Vincent, but I'm also talking to you, dear audience member, wherever you are on the world, on the couch, on a hot air balloon, on a, on a unicorn, at the gym. So when I say the word you, I'm talking to you, Vincent, but also you, the audience member. Okay, we clear? So let's just do a pop quiz to practice the interactive role play. Okay. Pop quiz to you. When you are choking, do you want a solution that is A? Spiritual or B, mechanical. Take my mechanical choice, please. Excellent gold stars to you. By you, I mean Vincent and you, audience member. Hello. Okay. All right. Ooh, double double bonus pop quiz. Would you rather have a solution to your anxiety that is A, spiritual, or B, mechanical? I think I'm going to go mechanical one more time. Double bonus gold stars to you. All right, so here we go. In this role play, we are friends, me and you, okay? We're friends. And let's say that for a while, I've been a pretty good friend to you. And, you know, you trust me and you feel good around me, okay? But now let's say you get into a bit of trouble, really get into trouble, and you come to me, and on the count of three, you, meaning Vincent and you, I want you to say, Daniel... I could really use your help. Okay, so on the count of three, you say, hey, Daniel, I could use some help. One, two, three. Hey, Daniel, I could use some help. Yeah, I honestly do not care. Okay, there's a lot of other people that I care about way more than you. And if I can help them and get them to like me, maybe if there's some scraps left over, maybe I'll care about you. But honestly, you're not that important. And when you tell me you need anything, I just don't really care what you need. So you're kind of on your own and I'm not reliable and you can't trust me. So don't even bother asking. And if you do, yeah. Okay. If I treat you that way, is that going to help you feel less safe and more anxious or more safe 
and calm. I feel less safe, more agitated still. Why am I not getting help? Yes. So what that shows is, first of all, is that mechanically underneath anxiety is feeling unsafe. And basically, human beings feel unsafe. And if you feel unsafe, then you'll it'll show up in your body as a feeling that feels like fear. Right. And then you'll label that feeling anxiety, overwhelm, panic, insecure, doubt. Anxiety is is a naming of a feeling. But can you see that underneath mechanically, you basically feel unsafe? So that's mechanics piece number one. You don't have an anxiety issue. You have a not feeling safe issue. And mechanics lesson number two was I can do things to you as your friend to make you feel unsafe and anxious. Okay. Okay. Next part. Now imagine I've treated you crappy as a friend. And then you come to me and you say, Daniel, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. Okay. On the count of three, say, Daniel, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. One, two, three. Daniel, the way you're treating me makes me feel unsafe. Why are you, what is wrong with you? Why do you feel this way? You're fine, dude. You're fine. There's no problems and you feel that you're, you're going crazy and there's something wrong with you. Also, don't bring your stuff to me, okay? I got a lot of other stuff going on. I can't sit here and hang out with you and feel you. You're on your own. Deal with this on your own. This is not my fault. This is your fault. Okay. Does that help you feel safe and calm? Or does are you going to end up feeling less safe and anxious? Still feeling less safe, more anxious. Okay. And can you see this is almost mechanical? And this would be almost any human. Okay. Now, I'm sorry to do that to you. It was for the sake of science. I would never treat you that way, dear listener or Vincent. Okay. All right, so that is showing that there are things that can happen that will make you feel unsafe and anxious. But of course, if you understand the mechanics, you should be, you should be able to then flip it. So now you come to me again, and on the count of three, you're going to say, Daniel, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. And instead of making you feel worse, I'm going to help you feel better. Only if the mechanics are there. So let's on the count of three, you, Vincent, and audience members say, Daniel, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. On the count of three. One, two, three. Daniel, the way you're treating me still makes me feel unsafe. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for telling me. I, oh, God. You're not even anxious, man. Of course you feel this way after the way I've been treating you. You don't even trust me. Or, oh, God. All right. I've been a horrible friend to you, and I want to be a good friend to you, and I want to re build the trust with you so that you can feel safe and calm. But man, in the meantime, I'm just so sorry I did anything to make you feel that way. I appreciate okay. your apology. Do you Daniel. feel less calm and anxious or do you feel more calm or sorry, more safe and calm? I feel safer now. I feel calmer. Boom. So I know a lot's going on there, but what I tried to communicate is that like there's sort of mechanics in there, almost like reflexes. If you do this, this is going to happen. Did you kind of experience the simplicity and the mechanicality? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, in this role play, basically, we were in a friend relationship, and I was basically not treating you very well. But can you also see that on some level, you are in a relationship with yourself, and on some level, sometimes you're not very good to yourself? Yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's a bunch of situations where I try to, I know I need to be kinder to myself. Yeah. We, we know there's areas where we're not better to ourselves. What we discovered though, is those things are mechanically making you feel unsafe within yourself. On top of there are things in the external world that are making you feel unsafe. So what I'm sharing with you is that there are things that are going on in the world from the world, but also from you to you that are mechanically making you feel unsafe. And you don't even know you're really doing it, so you can't stop it. But the beauty is that we can turn this around and you can feel safe and calm. So a lot of people just think, oh, wow, if I could be less anxious. No, it's better than that. What we're doing, we're allowing, we're, we have a six-week process that teaches you the mechanics such that you can wake up every morning 
and just feel calm and safe and centered from the inside out. Can you see how much better life would be if you just woke up with this like inherent feeling of safety from within? It would be amazing. An everyday feeling like that? Sure. Yeah. And it doesn't go away. You don't have to manage it. And you're not just less anxious. You're more confident. The self-doubt, all those are just different symptoms of not feeling safe. A client came to us about six weeks ago um, from, was it Oregon or Washington? I forget. And he, you know, he, he had his job, you know, he had these panic attacks over uh, giving workplace presentations. Very and I said, okay, thing. well, our program will solve that. I said, but what about, do you feel confident at work? He said, oh, no, 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 no. At, at meetings, I just, I just sit there. And I explained to him that that's all that insecurity, that self-doubt, that fear of rejection, that's also just a symptom of not feeling safe. And I said, we can get that also. And he said, like, look, man, just get the anxiety. I don't like, you know, you had me at hello. I don't need the second one. So anyway, he goes through the program and, and week five, we get a message from him. And he said, tell Daniel that not only do I feel calm? He said, but for the first time in three years, I raised my hand in a business meeting and volunteered for a wow. project. And he said, I never would have done that. And he was right. I now not only feel calm, I feel more confident. And he, so that's the power of what we're doing. Well, congratulations on the impact you're having on others. I know it's got to feel good to, after all that hard work, let others feel the same joy you felt. Um, we've made everybody wait on their seats here, Daniel. They're itching. Where can they find more about you online? They want to look at you. They want to see all the great work you're doing. They're anxious here and they want, and you're trying to remove the anxiety. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, ultimately you can go to my website, but there's more I want to, I want to share because this is the information that nobody has that when we discovered it again, it gave people hope because they went, oh, this makes a lot more sense that this is simple. So can I share more sort of simplicity paradigm? Also, the reason I want to share this audience, this information with your audience is if you don't know this, you have this fear and anxiety and you can't solve it. So what do you start to do? You start to blame yourself and you feel shame and you feel broken and there's something wrong with you. And I share this information so that your audience can start to go, oh, wait a minute. Maybe this wasn't my fault. Maybe just the, the experts we trusted had an incomplete understanding and they couldn't solve it. And that's why. So first of all, the reason you haven't solved your fear and anxiety is not because you're broken and there's anything wrong with you. It's because they were trying to solve it uh, philosophically, theoretically, spiritually, and psychologically. But that doesn't get the job done. I don't know if you know this. Uh, Sigmund Freud, one of the icons and fathers of modern psychology, was a cocaine addict and a chain smoker. So like the origins of the psychology industry is basically saying, hey, you know, we'll, we have some cool concepts, but we may not even like get the job done. And so those are the, a lot of the people you're trusting with your money and time and a trillion dollars a year gets spent on mental health and it's not solving it. And like, I'm not okay with it. Like the engineer means like people are in pain. They need real permanent results. And the reason we got the results is because we we challenged the entire mental health industry. We started from scratch because we were outsiders. We weren't we didn't learn anything in school and we weren't experts. We were just looking at this with fresh eyes through trying to solve it. And the mental health industry is not trying to solve this. They go to school, they learn some cool concepts and modalities and they manage things and they pass them on and then they get paid. And they're fine with that. And there's some value in that, but also it's a really good business model if you never solve it. Like going to therapists for years and years and years, not only is our program way, way, way more affordable than you'd think because it's all automated, but it's six weeks. Like we want this to be affordable, but that was our passion. And once we wanted to solve it, we questioned everything, including what we're told about mental health is that it's mental. Right. You know, we're told anxiety is a problem of the mind. It's called mental health. It's got the word mental right in there. That's what we're told. So we said, okay, is that getting results? Is that solving it? And we said, no. And we said, okay, well, maybe, maybe anxiety is not a problem of the mind. Where might it be coming from? And again, once we started asking these questions, the answer was simple. When people say they're anxious, do they say, I think I'm anxious or I feel anxious? Feeling anxious. Yeah, I feel. Where do we feel it? your throat, your chest, your heart, your stomach. Okay, so the experts tell everybody anxiety is a problem of the mind. 
and they're not solving it. But listen to those words, throat, chest, heart, stomach. Does that sound like, does that sound like the mind to you or the body? Sounds physical. It doesn't just sound, but it is physical. It's the epic body. Now, once you hear this, you go, oh, of course. Yeah, it's in the body, but not of course. Everyone's been sent to the wrong location. Now, by the way, this is not theoretical. This isn't my like little pet theory that I came up with one day on the beach. When we saw that it was in the body and started developing early prototypes of our tools just on the body, my anxiety and our, and our test case anxiety went down and keywords stayed down, which let us know we're in the actual root cause location. We knew that from the data, but your audience doesn't know that. So if you're listening to this, the reason you haven't solved your anxiety is not because there's anything wrong with you. The experts sent you to the literal wrong location. That's why you're so confused. They sent you to the wrong place. You don't even have an anxiety issue. You just have a location issue. So people say to me, Daniel, how, how can you solve anxiety? Like what magical potion do you have? And I'm like, it's not magic. All magic tricks behind the magic trick is something simple. So to your listener, to you, Vincent, can you understand that if anxiety is not a problem of the mind, but of the body, and we go from focusing on the wrong location to the right location, can you see that maybe we did solve it and maybe it could be simple? Absolutely. Yes. I have one more piece I want to share, but any questions? Because I, I know you know a lot about no, this topic. I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the listen. I'm enjoying the watch. Thank you. All right. So again, I'm sure your audience has questions and like, Daniel, what about this? And sounds good, but I completely get it. I'm just trying to create a perceptual framework so that you can see that solving this isn't your, the, the reason you have this still isn't your fault. And also there is a way out that's simple. And then if you're curious, go download the free technique and try it for yourself to get a real result. Again, I'm not trying to convince you from here. I'm trying to show you why this is possible. The other reason it's possible is because once you go from the mind to the body, things just get inherently simple for everything. Like the mind, first of all, the approach is psychological. It's not even very precise, but also the mind is, they don't, nobody understands the mind. It's like 180 billion neur neur neurons and like 100 trillion synaptic pathways. Like they don't understand it. So if you don't understand where you're focused, how are you gonna figure it out? The mind is complicated, but, but the body, the body is simple. And it's mechanical, ligaments, arteries, skin, teeth, uh, breathing, respiratory, all of that's mechanics and engineering. Your heart, it's all mechanics. Your tongue is mechanics. It's, it's all mechanics. And we understand mechanics. We understand how to, when I was a kid and I tried to impress a girl with a dance move, I tried to flip off a wall. I realized I couldn't flip off a wall. When I landed, my whole knee exploded. I landed cool. That's kind of like superhero pose, like, but my whole knee exploded. But did I have to live with a busted knee for the rest of my life? No. I went to an ACE, a knee doctor. He showed me the mechanical ACL tear on the MRI. He said, we will mechanically put in a new ligament. They mechanically did. And I was up and running in five months later, and I've never had any problems. That was all a mechanical understanding with a mechanical solution, which we do in the body. So we just asked ourselves, is there a system in the body that's making everybody feel like this. Because if there's a system, then we can figure out the engineering of the system, why it's not working and making everybody feel unsafe and turn it around. Again, once we did that, the answer was simple. So pop quiz to you. First of all, before I ask the pop quiz, take out the word anxiety, which is kind of confusing. People really aren't still what it is, where it's coming from. Is it anxiety? Is it the, Take out the word anxiety and just say, People are feeling way more nervous than they quote unquote should be. Use the word nervous, okay? Extra, extra, extra nervous is a panic attack. Uh, kind of nervous is worry. Extra, extra nervous is, you know, anxiety. Just, just say everyone's walking around feeling unsafe and nervous, okay? What system in the body do you think is probably responsible or out of whack and making everybody extra nervous? The capillary system, the respiratory system, or the nervous system? Mm, if I had to take a guess here, Daniel, I'm going to go with nervous system. Gold stars to you, Vincent, and dear audience member. Now, did you have to study that and research that for years, or was that answer kind of simple? Seems pretty simple. It's pretty simple, and it's pretty true. There's a system in your body called the nervous system. 
essentially what we discovered is it has crashed. It's gone into a state of disrepair and it's out of whack and making everybody feel very unsafe, a.k.a. extra nervous, a.k.a. anxious. So mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with you. You have a system in the body that's crashed, just like teeth can need a root canal. Uh, people can have heart attacks. People can blow out knees when trying to impress girls with dance moves. Systems in the bodies can go into a state of disrepair. It sucks. There's pain, but you're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not flawed. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, look how simple that is. You got a whole. You got millions of people feeling extra nervous. There's a literal system in the body called the nervous system. We know systems can malfunction. And yet the experts, after 100 years of poor results, went, oh, I know where this is coming from. Yeah, this is a brain disorder, mind disorder. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? There's a system in the body called the nervous system. Everyone's feeling nervous. But th they're experts, and so they're not waking up to the new paradigm. It's your nervous system in your body. Now, I'm not the only one to figure this out. There are other experts in the field, like Besser Vandal Kolk, you know, wrote, the body keeps the score, Gabor Mate and can like people are already starting to understand it's the body, right. but the majority of the mental health industry is still behind. And I've asked therapists who understand it's a body issue. I said, why is this not, why is this not more understood? It's so obvious. They're like, you know, they, they got confused and they've all been regurgitating the same information and, you know, innovation takes time. You know, there was a time when leeches were really popular. There was a time George Washington was sick, so they decided to drain his blood and give his blood fresh air. You know, the, that was an expert. And then they went, hmm, perhaps leaving the blood on the inside is a better idea. So I think the quote unquote mental health community, you know, uh, is regurgitating the same old information. We saw this because we didn't want to regurgitate. We wanted to innovate. And that's what we did. But to clarify, you do not have anxiety. You're not an anxious person. You have a system in your body called the nervous system. It is crashed. It's gone into a state of disrepair and it's making you extra feel unsafe, AKA anxious. And what we did spent over all those years is to understand this system and the mechanics and engineering. Why is it crashed? And more importantly, how do you repair it? Cause this isn't a surface level thing. Sometimes people say, oh, Daniel, I do breathing exercises. I know it's in the body. Breathing exercises, is it's surface level. It doesn't go deep enough. It's like if you need a root canal and you just brush and floss, like that's not enough. You have to repair the system. And meditation, breathing exercises, that's surface level, but it doesn't repair it. We figured out a process step-by-step step, with a set of exercises. First, you learn to repair the nervous system, meaning you basically like stop the, the damage and you bring it back to center. Then phase two is you retrain the nervous system. Basically, you recalibrate it back to balance. And phase three is that you understand how to maintain the nervous system. So repair, retrain, and maintain. And, and, that's, and we laid out all the steps so that you can do that in six weeks. And the end result is that when the program is over, you just feel safe from within. And then life can push on you and you can be challenged, you might feel some stress, but you don't feel fear, you don't feel panic, you don't feel terror, you don't feel anxiety, and you're free of it. And then you take all that energy that you used to do to manage your anxiety, and you, you take all that energy into just being a more confident, happier you. We are not solving anxiety. We are empowering people to be fully authentic and liberated to be them best, them, their best selves. Can you tell I get excited about this, Vincent? I absolutely can. And I'm really glad that you were able to make some time to spend with our audience, revisit some of the great topics you had in your first show. Everyone, please scroll down in the episode description. If you missed his first time here, he got a lot of great things to say then of two, of course. So click play there after you click play here today. Daniel, please share it, everybody, where we can find you online. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me, Vincent. Thank you, audience member. I know they've learned a lot. I know your audience is very savvy about this. I mean, it's called Mental Health Break. So they've been working on their mental health for a while. They've learned a lot of stuff. So they know what doesn't work. And I hope they heard me say something. So A, you stop. You realize this isn't your fault and you stop blaming yourself. But also, I hope I create an opening for you to see this could be simple. But that's not enough. Don't just stop at information. 
Okay, information is way overrated if you want to solve something. What you need is action and a real solution. I like things simple. Okay, so next step, my name's Daniel Packard. What do you think my website is? Oh, I know what it is, but uh, please share it with everyone else out there. All right, so a lot of websites end in .com. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to take my name, Daniel Packard, and just put on .com at the end. You may know .com from things such as Google.com or Amazon.com. So don't take the Google part or the Amazon, just the .com part, put it on my name, okay? Simple. Now, I like to make things simple to get people help. So this training, I want them to apply, get this training where you apply a technique that you're going to learn. It's 45 minutes long and you will get a real result. To keep things simple, what do you think I'm charging for this training, Vincent? I'm the wrong guy to ask. I don't want to give anyone in the audience false impressions, so please, you could share. Zero. We are making it free to keep things simple so that people can get help. So go to danielpacker.com, get a free 45-minute training. And what you're going to learn is two things. You're going to get a deep understanding of why when we did that role play, you felt unsafe. You're going to get an understanding of why you feel anxious and unsafe that you have not heard before from the mental health community. And it's going to make a lot of sense. And it's literally right under your nose. And it's simple. Then we're going to explain the theory of basically how does one feel safe and less anxious. And then you're going to apply one of our techniques to your anxiety and you're going to measure and you will feel measurably calmer and safer from applying the technique. I got an email from someone who did it last week and she said, I haven't felt after three minutes, I did your exercise three minutes. I haven't felt that level of calm since childhood. Now I'm not saying everyone will feel that, but that's the effectiveness. And what I want that when you feel this safety and this calm and you see that it's simple, I want people to know that so you can see this is simple and it can give you hope that you do not have to live like this and keep managing this for the rest of your life. I am free of this. Our clients are free of this. You can be free of this. This energy that you see, remember, I was in a fetal position in my apartment and now look at me. And this is not fake. This is not cocaine. This is the passion and excitement of also someone with a really healthy nervous system. So if you are losing hope and think you have to live like this for the rest of your life, you don't. Go to my website, get the free training, and just see what's possible. Thank you for sharing that, Daniel. And everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode. The show is at a Mental Health Break podcast on Instagram, Mental Health Break on Facebook. And of course, I am at Vincent A. Lancy. Be sure to head there on YouTube so you get some video preview clips from today's show with Daniel. And with that, we are signing off today. Daniel, thank you so much.